All right, we're back. We're gonna show you how to bag the front of your 63 to 66 C10. Uh, I think it goes all the way up to a 72 pretty much the same way. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna start recording and just kind of walk you through it a little bit. Uh, I'm not gonna be talking the whole time, but I'll talk you through some of the some of the things you have to do. And uh, whenever I get to it to install on the parts, I'll walk you through all the different parts and where I ordered the stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. But yeah, let's get started. All right, so one of the first things you wanna do here is um, go ahead and take this tie rod off or get it loose here that way you can swivel this around and get to everything a little bit easier see what i was saying about Go ahead and loosen up the bottom one. This one does have a cotter pin. It's a booger. All right, so since uh, the previous owner cut the springs in this thing, you can see they're just wobbling around now. If these were the factory springs or just not cut springs you would want to jack this bottom up before you start loosening this uh, nut because what you don't want is you're loosening this up that spring to come out come flying out it's probably one of my worst fears I've had good luck so far but most of the vehicles that I've bagged have had lowering springs already so it hasn't really been a problem Let's go ahead and loosen up that nut. Fifteen sixteenths. Okay, what I like to do right here is before I knock this out, go ahead and take off this top shock. That way when I pop this, the shock and everything's gonna drop down. Then I just gotta get out these lower control arm bolts. This will fall out. And pretty much that is what we're wanting to do to start installing the bracketry and the lower control arms and all that stuff. If you don't have a impact like this go get one for two years i did all this stuff manually and once i bought this thing i'm like what the heck have i been doing I've been wasting all this time got that things loose now the way i like to do this is since this new control arm has the um, the new ball joint and all that kind of stuff in there. Just give the top of this a whack and it should drop out. Sometimes they're in there pretty good. There it is, the lower control arm is loose. Now, some people will go ahead and take this spindle and all this stuff all the way off. What I found out is, and I'll show you in a minute, I can jack this up and put a piece of wood in between this. And that's all the clearance I need to drill the holes for the bag bracket and to mount all that stuff. Um, so why, why disassemble everything when, when you can just kind of move it out of the way? These lower control arm bolts are, let me see, five eighths. Mm -hmm. So 
So there's a lower control arm. We've got new shocks that we'll put on. So uh, I'll move this jack over here. We'll jack that up out of the way and we'll start bolting in the upper bag brackets. So all you're trying to do when you jack this up, we just need to the top of this because we're going to uh, mount down the upper bag bracket and we've got to uh, tap out, drill out to, uh, four holes. So. This is a trick that I use. I just put a piece of wood in there and then lower this back down. Like that. So our next step is we're going to take this bag bracket. This is a crown suspension bag bracket. It's like 30 bucks. It comes with the hardware. We're going to mount this up and then we are going to drill some pilot holes right in the center of where all those are. Then we'll go ahead and take that off and then we'll drill um, the holes that we need. That way we're not trying to drill through the bracket if it's not aligned perfect. Once we get that bolted in, then we come over here and we'll mount this bag to the bag bracket and then we'll bolt all this in. We've got to put the fitting on there first and, and all that too. So I'll walk us through that when we get there, but let's go ahead and bolt up that bag bracket and uh, start drilling some holes. This is probably the most uh, time consuming part of it. Uh, I've tried step bits and, and everything, but since it's double layer like that, I figured out the best way is a tiny pilot hole and just move up in sizes of drill bits um, just slowly. It's a slow process, but it's easier than just trying to overpower it or um, just wearing yourself out. So bear with me as we drill these holes. So this is going to go in with this little slanted piece right here. That's going to be where your brake line is. That way you're not bolted into that. There isn't a perfect way to mount these bag brackets in there. There's a little bit of flexibility. It's just getting them in a place that when you pre-drill the holes that the, that the bolt is going to go through the hole without getting too close to the sidewall here where you can't get a nut on it. I've had that happen once. Um, it was a little too close. I still made it work. But yeah, once you get those close, then we're just going to pre-drill the hole with a tiny drill bit and we'll know that, we'll take everything off and we'll just drill them to the size that we need them. So we have all the holes pre-drilled. Now it's just gonna take some time. I'm gonna go ahead and do some movie magic and I'll be with you after I got that done. <laughs> all right, cool. I've got all the holes drilled now, ready to bolt in this top bag bracket. But first we need to put the fitting in the front bag. Uh, it's best to use one of these 90 degree fittings so the airline's not running straight up. It has a nice shot there. And um, yeah, so we'll get the fitting on. Use Thread Locker Blue. This has been some great stuff. It doesn't take a lot. And ever since I started using this instead of thread tape, I've had a lot less leaks. Um, I try to build all my systems leak free. Um, sometimes you have to go back and, and uh, you might have missed something, but Blue Truck did really good. So yeah, let's go ahead and, and get started. You just put one little loop around it there. Whenever you thread it in, 
it will go all the way around the thread so it just takes a little bit like that so you can see it start spreading there all the way to the top Excess. You have to remember which way you put that bag in. It's going to be like this. Your brake is right here. So what I like to do on these, just from, from the experience, I'll mount these all the way into the truck. So as far as I can make that bracket go forward, I think it aligns better. There we go, that's that part of it. So what we're gonna do is down at the bottom, we'll go ahead and mount this up. You'll wanna run the bolts up through the bottom. It's a lot easier if you did it through the top, but I don't like how the, the threads stick down close to where the bag is gonna deflate, so I always put them up, and then we'll put washers and nuts on those, and uh, we'll get that all bolted up. There we go. I usually just start with this front right one because I can see it and get to my get to the bolts easier. That's what you want to see. You know you got a good placement if that lines up perfectly. So that's got that top bag mounted in there. So now all we have left is put that lower control arm, bolt that bag in, hook all this stuff back up, put the shock in there, and we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and install this CPP lower control arm. Um, pretty simple. Got some U-bolts and some nuts there. Put that on there. We'll jack it up to the bag and bolt it in. Get our lower lower spindle bolt in, our tie rod, and uh, man, we're getting close. So my trick with these is don't try to get the control arm exactly lined up. See, there's little divots in here in here that you uh, line up with where these are at what you want to do is just get your u-bolt up in there and get a nut started that way it takes all the weight of the control arm off of you and then once you do that see if you can then kind of push up and if not what i do is i'll go to the other side and get a get a nut started then I'll adjust everything where it needs to go and then I'll then I'll tighten it down. Once you get both of those started, then you just line it up with your pins. your wood All right. you just start bolting bolting all the stuff back together starting with the uh, lower spindle bolt
jack up the control arm until it reaches the bag, the bottom of the bag. And then you'll get under it and there's some, there's some little grooves here and you just line up where the bag is with the bolt and bolt it in. So you can see where the shock mounts up, but before we go there, I'll show you the shocks that I ordered. So from my buddy, Nick Hester, he does all of his trucks it's almost the same way I'm doing here. He cups his bottoms though. And this is the shocks that he recommended. These are CPP three inch lowering shocks and they work perfect for air ride. Um, they're maxed out when it's all the way down, but at ride height, they're in the middle of their stroke. So here's the, the number for those. Here's what they look like. I'm gonna get those out. It comes with all the hardware and everything. Lower control arm came with the, the shock uh, mounting hardware as well. So I'll set up my camera and then I'll meet you down there. So this is all done. We are officially bagged here. Hey, I wanted to thank you for just taking a few minutes to watch the video. It's one of my very first videos. I'm just, uh, I started this to just try to help the community. You know, if you're brand new to doing this, I want to encourage you that, uh, hey, it's possible. I only started a couple years ago with some YouTube videos. So I hope that something that I said or a way that I showed you how to do things would give you confidence that you could do that too. So Hey, subscribe, like, whatever. Um, I'll continue to put out content as much as I can. And uh, yeah, truck on, man.